I'd love to understand what have you discovered about the link between empathy and performance? Well, first, I think we need to dispel the notion that empathy means less. And I didn't really even understand it until I started doing these, you know, uh, book tour interviews where people said to me, OK, so we got to be empathetic. we got to be nice. we got to make concessions for people. Um, let them do less and expect less. And I thought, well, there may be days that's true. Your dad dies. You have to put your dog to sleep. There are days that we have to be human, and that's true. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about empathy as a means of understanding your workforce so you can help them not only motivate them, but help them become self-propelled. Empathy ultimately drives performance. It's not about it, 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 lesser performance. It's about greater performance. It's also about greater balance. Because what's really happened during the pandemic, and I think people get all caught up on where work takes place, you know, home, hybrid office, I have, really have no opinion on that. What I think has happened is, and I, everything's pictures to me, so I have to draw, is we had a smaller circle uh, in 2019 that was called our personal life. And we had agency over our personal life. And we had a bigger circle that casted a shadow on that smaller circle, and that was our professional life. The smaller circle is what makes our eulogy at the end of the day. This bigger circle is what makes our resume. And when you have an existential crisis, the personal circle grew, the professional circle shrunk a little bit, they became overlapped, we had agency over both, and we started asking, which is why I call it an existential crisis, is this what I'm doing with my life? Do I want to work with this jerk? Do I want to do this stuff I don't believe in? And that's why I think we've seen such a, the Great Resignation is really five greats. We've seen such an upheaval in what people do. And, and what I say is it's not about where we work. It's about where work fits in our lives. And I will argue when it fits in the right place, we will get better performance. So empathy to me is ultimately, it is a nice thing to do. It's a right thing to do. It's a way of being human. All of those things are given, but it's also, if you do it right, a performance driver. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important, isn't it? And, and I guess for leaders who maybe particularly those that have grown up, being led very differently and maybe learned how to lead from from people that have led them it, it, it's it's challenging i guess it's a huge shift and i and i gave uh, a couple of talks one week to uh real estate, commercial real estate folks and they were all it was mostly boomers some gen x they were mostly kind of alpha dog folks a lot of more male than one of them was almost all male it's not gender though but that was the case in the, in this instance and they were like, Arch, don't you think we're getting woke? And aren't we getting soft? And aren't we losing our edge? And I thought, oh, I'm not explaining this right, if that's what you're taking away from this. But I also thought, I'm telling you to have empathy, but I'm not having empathy for you. And I think that was a huge aha, is that if you were brought up, uh, raised with this, give up your Saturdays, don't go to your kid's soccer game or cricket game, whatever it may be. Work comes before everything. Maybe go on to your second or third marriage because you've ground all your relationships to dust. That's how you become a leader. And then in order to lead, you've got to have your people be afraid of you and not like you. And that that's what you were brought up with. This does seem like how could this possibly work? And you have to have empathy for folks and say, I know you gave up all those things. I know what you went through frankly sucked. And the people who are coming along now that you're going to be leading are not going to put up with it. It's not going to work. So I need to have empathy effect for what you went through. But I can tell you, if you want to be successful, you are not going to be successful with those tactics. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.